Views expressed here are not supported by and do not reflect those of the Even Rush Network. Viewer's discretion is advised. Oh goodness, whoa, whoa, whoa. Where have we been? This is the podcast that you didn't know you needed, but now you know this is season two of Plug with Molly and Joe, the Mental Warriors. Yes, I am Molly. That is Joe. As you can see, there's a switch up, too, on the screen, too. Joe on the other side. I'm, I usually on the other side, I think. I don't know. It's usually the other way around, but I'm Molly. That's <laughs> Joe. I don't know which way I'd be. Oh, point that way. Yeah, I'm pointing. The, yeah. That's the way I'm pointing the show. Right. Yep, there you go. See? There we go. Now I might. I'm. I usually don't pay attention to the screen, so I'd be so focused, you know. <laughs> nah, it actually, it actually varies. It, it, it's no rhyme or reason to it. Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Yo, Joe. Oh, that's my. That was one of my favorite cartoons. GI Joe. I remember that. Yo, that's Joe. Right. Man. Wow. Yeah, man. Listen, man. What's been going on with you, brother? My goodness. Uh, where? What a difference a month makes, huh? Right, right. Uh, just it, it feels like it's been longer, but it's really only been about four or five weeks. But it's so much going on. I actually launched my tourism business uh, officially first week of October. So you know, I'll give you more details about that during as we move forward in the program. And you know, we got back into school. And um, tell me about it. We just you know, continuing what they need us to do. You know, I uh, haven't had any issues with uh, cases or anything, but we're still moving. You know, there's a new hierarchy in my in my organization, but can't let that stuff stop us. You know, we have when you have a mission, you just got to continue the mission. Right. Yeah. Um, in the last four to five weeks, man, listen, it's been trying, man. I mean, even like today, today is a trying day. Um, Today marks the one year that we lost my father in law. Um today and you know this time last year and you know instead of being down about it i was just trying to be upbeat about it and 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 understand that you know you know his life you know was a was a, was a gift to us you understand what i'm saying and we and you know we lived that to the fullest so you know what i mean sleep in peace to the to one of my ancestors to one of my you know to one of the people that came before me my og pop pops tyrone wesley wilkes you know what i mean um you know, sleep easy, big man. Sleep easy, man. Love you. Miss you. All the people miss you. He thought he was in love. He was one of them cantankerous old men. Like he was almost like a Fred <laughs> Sanford type. Fred Sanford type, you know? The, the get off the get off my grass type. Yeah, yeah. The get off like my grass. Too, so I can see myself too. I'm gonna be like that when I get older too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so um speaking of um places, the platforms that we're on, because someone asked about us being on Facebook live. And um, we're on YouTube live these days. We're trying to, trying to, you know, do things a certain way. Um, we're trying to get the Evening Rush Network up there to be like a household name, like 107.5 or Hot 97, because those are all networks. You understand what I'm saying? And within those networks, there's different shows for different people, for different flavors. So you can Hot 97, you've got Punk Flex, you've got you know, um, 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 Charlemagne and all these other different people and whatnot. You got different personalities within the organization. So, you know what I mean? Keep that in mind when you put, when you tune into the evening rush, when you like it, when you share it, you share in all of our content that way we, you know, be able to touch base with a lot of different people, you know? Absolutely. You just got to keep, continue to spread the word. Mm -hmm. Like I said in the past, there's more than enough news to get the word out there's more than enough ways to get it out we just got to continue letting people know that we are here and you know like the content will come the crowds will come you like there's, there's, right. there's an old movie that i used to watch um that these they said if you build it it will come right we are building it and people will continue to come so we're not i'm not even worried about that the more we spread the more we share right 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 like um any hiccups today you know the, the the streaming of it or whatever listen we on video we, we gonna have the video recorded we're gonna have it you know have the video streaming for you tomorrow you know the latest on the different platforms that we're on um we don't have that list in front of us there's so many man it's spotify it's youtube facebook uh anchor.fm you got um you got so many 
Hey, what a there we surprise. go. What a surprise! Finally made it. Yeah, Finally we, made it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We we ain't want to spoil the surprise, so we let it. You know, we just let it. We just let it rock, <laughs> rock, rock on. But you know, introducing one of our 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 co-hosts for the for this, for this season here. You know, he go. You know, I'm sure he's gonna be in and out doing his thing. Turn your screen. He said. Turn yeah, your yeah, screen. yeah. There, there we go. go. All right. Um. Zachariah. Zachariah. Yeah, listen, listen, this is what happened when you go live, man. You know what I mean? Right. Everything <laughs> go down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but he here. So the reason why he's 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 on location right now is because he was traveling with his family and he had to make his way back home. So, you know, he get a pass tonight. But that's that Cali. That's that Cali time. And anyway, it's early. We over here, 9 o'clock, trying to keep our eyes open and whatnot. You over here ready to go to dinner now. Yeah, we, uh, we, so we're driving back from San Francisco, spend a couple days up there, uh, visit my brother up there. And uh, I stopped at Santa Cruz, found a Starbucks where I could get some good um, – uh, connection, Wi-Fi connection, and uh, so just specifically to do the show. Yes, yes, yes. Yo, I love it, man. To, to be honest with you, some people would be like, "Oh man, what's going on here?" Man, listen, I love it. That's the family. That's you know, family hood. That's what we I mean, you know, this is a prime example of how important I feel this movement is, and um, you know, just. Um, really appreciative to be to be a part of it, and you know whatever I can do to bring or bring to the table, I'm gonna do everything I can. But um, you know, having having a short notice of the first week we're being back, I happen to be out on vacation already, and I wouldn't miss it, you know, for nothing. So uh, whether I be on the road and had to stop, you know, to, uh, to play my part, I tell my family, look, we're gonna stop for an hour. Like, oh, what are we gonna do? I'm like, you'll find something. <laughs> this, is an important, this is an important cause, and I uh, can't miss it. So, right, right, right. We, we appreciate, appreciate you. you. We appreciate you. I appreciate you for being here, man. Listen, if you if you don't know who Zachariah is, guys, listen, look at look at uh, some of our old shows for him in it. He is one. Listen, he is one of the more powerful brothers out here. Any shade, you understand what I'm saying? I don't care what shade you could think of. He's one of the more powerful powerful brothers out here. So don't go with the cliches because he'll get you. I that. <laughs> I, none of them fit me anyway. They don't fit. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's not, no, it don't. It don't. It don't. It don't. It don't at all, man. So listen. Listen up, guys. So what we're doing is it's going to be a little bit different, but a lot the same, right? So we're going to do our – we're going to pay our homage. We're going to um, let you know the platforms we're on, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Anchor.fm, Spotify, Our Heart Radio, Mixcloud, Google Podcast, iTunes Podcast, and, of course, the Evening Rush Network. You can also tune into our Facebook page. That's um, Plug with Molly and Joe on Facebook. You can type that in, and you'll find our page. And what we're going to do this season around, we're going to put more content. We're going to put more information, more news, more, more breaking news when it comes down to, 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 to our people, you understand what I'm saying, and to the struggle, because our people ain't the only people in the struggle, so I'm not, you know, I would never be, you know, um, I never down any other nationality that's in the same struggle that we're in. I think um, I think the term our people applies to, to um, I mean, from my perspective, and especially according to how my father raised me, it applies to people who are like-minded and that we are uh, supposed to be one people and that freedom is a right that's granted to all human beings and unfortunately we live in a world where the elite have chosen who deserves it and who doesn't so I believe our people are the ones that still share that belief and are willing to stand up and make it happen for anyone that doesn't get it or has not been granted those rights or where who, who has been stolen from and so that's what and that's what the show. category of anyone's uh, 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 no matter what color or, or so-called quote-unquote race or background you come from and you willing to stand up for that then you are our people exactly and that's what this show that's what this podcast that's what this radio show whatever you want to call it um it's going to reveal is that we're all one people no matter no matter no matter what shade of shade that people want to put on you know? you know and it just so happens that we have to focus on um you know issues that address 
uh, a certain group or certain groups of people because they are targets. Yes. And, um, and I say we, um, because, you know, I, I, I jump in the boat anytime, you know, right. willing to fight for, for, for whoever, whoever is being persecuted. Exactly. Um, yes. So, raised, okay. So, without further ado, what we're going to have here today, we're going to do what we do is, oh, also you could call in. Call in to us. Um, that's 929-441-2417. That's 929-441-2417. All right. In one second, I'm trying to adjust my mic. I don't know. He's saying that he can't hear me. I never really have these issues. Hold on. Let me see if I could just bring it closer or something. Yeah, no. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our paying homage sec section. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to work on an intro video to that, too. We're going to just start doing all kinds of visuals. You know what I'm saying? Just give you a few visuals. Here and there, you know? So this is our paying homage section. This is the section where we talk about um, our ancestors or people who influenced us in life and influenced our, our, our way of thinking, in a sense. So uh, first up, for that always and, it, and always will be is my main man, Joe. Who you got for us this week, Joe? Ah, uh, I can tell you, I have somebody who's not really recognized in the in the life, but is recognized in the Pan Africanist community. I'm talking about Dr. France Omar Bannon. Okay. This was Indian psychiatrist and a political philosopher from the French colony of Martinique. He was responsible for a lot of the ways that we think as Black West Indians, um, especially after World War II. Two of his very famous books, and two that I've read, um, one is called The Wretched of the Earth. This work focuses on what he believed was a necessary role of violence by activists in conducting decolonization struggles. And another book that I'm a fan of his is called Black uh, Skins, white mask which talks about the negative psychological effects of colonial subjugation upon black people so mm -hmm. he was doing this in the 50s and the 60s before a lot of other people was doing this so that's why i can appreciate that about dr fannin you know and you know you you have the guys like amos wilson and henry clarks and the ivan Sotinas. but france fannin is one of those that are unrecognized and we want to pay homage to him you know spreading what you know black psychology is and letting it know that it still exists today so i'm paying homage to dr fannin for that yes sir indeed that's a good one bro actually that's what i love about this um this segment you know? That's what I love about this segment in itself is because that um, men like that, where I don't have a clue of who he is, what he, you know, what he's done, and it just, you know, it just it comes, you know, it's so, it's so awesome. Um, Zach, mute yourself real quick, bro. Okay. Uh, here we go. Yeah, we got some background on what's going on here. Yes, sir. All right, let's not slow it down. All right, so who do I have? I have the none, none other, the great, the the incomparable Jim Brown, James Nathaniel Brown, former American football player, like one of the greatest, great, one of the greats when it comes down to this NFL thing. Um, but he did it his way. He was like Marshawn Lynch before Marshawn Lynch was Marshawn Lynch. You know what I mean? Like he was, he was, he was always politically aware. He 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 could say that his friends were the likes of Malcolm X and Mar and 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 and, and um, 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 Muhammad Ali, you know what I mean, and, and 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 Bill Russell. And when you get that list, when you say that list alone, you know that he they you know he was in the political now. You understand what I'm saying? And that was then. And he still remains, you know, in the fight. You know what I mean? He still says what he has to say as an old man. And the one thing I love about him is that we could talk about his greatness in football, you understand? But it's it's it, 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 to me it 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 fails in comparison to what he's done outside of football. He's been changing lives. He was he started a program called the Ameri Can program, which I was a part of at one time here in Brooklyn 
when they tried to stem out to Brooklyn. And it was a program where um, ex-cons had spoke, you know, had spoke the truth to the youth and tried to get it allowed people to understand that every choice they make is the choice that they make. You understand what I'm saying? No more, no less. You don't want to sugarcoat it. And you, then you allow people to be who they are. You can't tell people what they what they're thinking. If that's how they feel, that's how they feel. So it helped shape a lot of my thinking now, just like being in his program. And he also came down for when we graduated and all that. It never panned out in Brooklyn, per se. I don't know why. Because now that I see doing my own community work, I see how some of the red flags will come up and it get a little strenuous or whatever. But um, it was a dope experience. And I want to give a shout out to the fact that I was able to get to learn, you know, something from 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 his tutelage, like because the American program was something that he, you know, he outlined. And it, I guess you could say that it spared me, you know, it sent me into my journey to do my own, to do my own thing here and now. So I want to just give a shout out to the great Jim Brown, who's known for football. But listen, he's 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 bigger than that. All right. So absolutely. Zachariah, who do you pay homage yeah. to right this minute, brother? Uh, today I chose Dick Gregory, uh, Richard Claxton Gregory, also known as Dick Gregory. Uh, American comedian, civil rights activist, oh, and vegetarian activist, which some people don't know. <laughs> That's um, and he's basically known for his no holds barred sets poking at bigotry and racism in the United States. Um, after his um, uh, efforts as a comedian. He also became a speaker and an author and primarily promoting um, civil rights and spirituality as well. Um, he once said a quote, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, quote if I may. Um, he gave a keynote uh, address for Black History Month at Bryn Mawr College in 2013. And his quote said, once I accept injustice, I become injustice. He said, for example, paper mills give off a terrible stench, but the people who work there don't smell it. Remember, Dr. King was assassinated when he went to work for garbage collectors. To help them as workers to enforce their rights, they couldn't smell the stench of the garbage all around them anymore. They were used to it. They would eat their lunch out of a brown paper bag sitting on a garbage truck. One day, a worker was sitting inside the back of the truck on top of the garbage and got crushed to death because no one knew he was there. And I thought that was a very powerful quote because it kind of mentions, it's, it's sort of a metaphor for when you don't stand up for it, you become part of the problem and you don't realize it because you're in it. You're in the garbage, you become part of the garbage and you don't realize that you start to smell just like the garbage that's all around you that you're tolerating. So um, I think that was a huge quote. Um, and I just wanted to uh, give light to, he was bigger than just a comedian and he did some great efforts and he was arrested many times and uh, appeared at many events and spoke out on shows uh, that are still controversial today, like, um, uh, uh, what's this guy's name? Uh, Alex Jones, um, uh, a few other shows that I can't think of offhand right now. Um, but yeah. Very great comedian, activist, and just humanitarian. So, Dick Gregory, giving shout out and props to you and raising awareness on who you really were. And yes, yes, Dick Gregory. But you know what's crazy? And just to piggyback off of what you said about Dick Gregory and then a Jim Brown, um, it, 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 it goes to show that their initial, their initial, mute yourself. Exactly. Yep, gotcha. It goes to show that their initial um, goals in life when, you know, their initial goals in life, um, football player, him being a comedian, never got in the way of, you know, their community work, their activism. You understand what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, that's a big that's a big plus. And that and, and that goes to show that, you know, it, whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing, um, whatever you're doing in life doesn't stop you from doing the right thing. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to Dick Gregory, Jim Brown, and France Fanning. All right. So right now, what we're doing is, is a little bit different. And so what we're doing is we're doing round robin current events. So it's a round robin situation. Joe, explain the round robin situation, bro. 
Well, the round robin situation came from a thought that I had because there were so many topics, so much that's happened within the last four to five weeks that we've been uh, incognito, if you will. And there's, I think these facts are important, so we need to get them all out. So what's going to happen is we're all going to be given about three topics to speak about within a 60 second time limit. So whether that's a rebuttal, whether that's something that we have to disagree or agree with, but we're going to get our point across with the, uh, with the, with the topics and we're going to say what we think about those topics and what our opinions are. I mean, if we have enough time within the 60 seconds to talk about uh, what we don't think about it or what we don't agree about it, We'll let it be our guide, but this is our chance to just, you know, get our association together, if you will. And this is the call, the SOS call, same old stuff. We're going to say stuff today. We're going to say stuff. I mean, I I wanted to say the other word, but I had to keep it PG. Right, right, (laughs) right, right. Same old stuff. I mean, it should be getting ready for bed right about now. Anyways, 921, we went to prime time just for that, right? So we could be a little looser, right? But no, same old stuff. You know, we're going to keep it PC. Same old stuff. Um, But what we're going to start off with is actually a little more recent. I guess it was happening in the the last few weeks. I mean, we've been watching football. I guess football is no longer boycotted by us. Um, Kaepernick got his bread. That was the only thing I had a problem with. Let him get his money. He got his money. Hey, I'm good. I mean, mind you, all these are barbarian sports, you know, in the first place. So (laughs) go figure, right? right? But John Gruden. John Gruden got fired for inappropriate comments in his emails, stemming for about seven or eight years between 2003, no, 2010 and 2018. John Gruden got fired for inappropriate comments. Oh, boy. All right, I guess I'm going first, right? One minute. Okay, here we go. John Gruden got fired. Man, listen, I don't care. It's not even like, come on, man. I think I... Honestly, I think he's being railroaded because if they said it was since 2018, that means at the time when people got real sensitive about being called names and all this other stuff, that's when it started happening. You had you had to be more more mindful of your emails, more mindful of your texts, more mindful of all of these different things, right? So I look at John Gruden's situation as much as I look at my situation when I was e- when I'm emailing somebody and I'm being you know like oh man stupid monkeys or whatever it might be you know what I mean like listen I, to say if he races or not I don't know but he was getting everybody he was getting the commissioner he was getting black folk he was getting like he didn't care it wasn't like oh okay well I'm 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 on you know like he was like he was a like he was a, um 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 what's these dudes name um. Like he was one of the good old boys or anything. I, I didn't get that. I didn't get that vibe out of him. You understand what I'm saying? So him getting fired for inappropriate comments, I think he got I think he's caught up in the system. He's getting railroaded within this system. This new system is doing him dirty. You know what I mean? So that's 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 where I got with John Gruden. And that's my time. I guess it's cool because I ain't really have much else to say, because he just shouldn't have got fired. Okay. I guess I'm the next one, huh? So yeah. going from John Gruden from football, we go into basketball. No, 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 no. You got to no. say six. You got to speak to John I gotta Gruden. I got to speak to John Gruden. Get your 60 seconds, brother. Okay, so let me yeah. get my 60 seconds. It's probably more like 45 now. But <laughs> uh, with, with John Gruden, I think he said what people say quietly. You know, I had a movie that I once created called Behind Closed Doors, An American Dream. If you can only think about what's being said behind closed doors when you're not listening. This is how a lot of people talk. You know, I've been around people that talk about it and don't see nothing past it. Think about the old um, white grandfather that's been around for 60 years Mm -hmm. and they make the comments during the holidays. John Gruden don't say nothing but nothing but like that. You know, they all say that. So... I'm, I mean, I get why he got fired because it was like a little too much and I was being exposed. But I think he, like you said, he was the scapegoat because there was a lot more that was going to be processed because this was another football team, not his own. He wasn't part of an organization when this stuff was happening. Right. He had, he had retired. He was he had retired. So the problem is 
if Gruden was saying that while he wasn't working, imagine what else they'll find. So there's a lot of pressure on the NFL to release those other emails that they found. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's the timer? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so the jingle, the jingle means time is up. I didn't, I didn't get it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put my little two cents in here, and I don't think it was even going to take 60 seconds, but um, – I, I agree with with what both of you guys said. I just think that we're in a we're in this era right now where if you get if you're in a public in the public eye and you express your opinion and it goes against what is quote unquote politically correct, then you're gonna, they're gonna make you out to become a victim, right? Yeah. And, and and it's because our rights are being slowly stripped from us without we're, we're not supposed to be noticing. So we we once had freedom of speech, right? And this was one country where you could express your views even against the president or or a political agenda. And, you know, you wouldn't be targeted, you know. But when when you're in the public eye now, this is one way that they put it out to the public where when a someone that is of celebrity status or, you know, on TV or a central figure in media does or says something against the agenda, now this is the way to show. Okay, this is where the public is not allowed to do this either. So you better watch what you say. And I guess it did take me a minute, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's not even about John Gruden. It's bigger than John Gruden. Yeah. Right. 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 And I agree. I agree. I I definitely agree with that part. Like it's 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 like they're putting everybody in their place. Like, listen, yeah, they're going so sense. far back. They're going mad far back to even to even start it. You know what I mean? To even to, like we're talking about it in 2021, chilling. You're going back to 2010, 2018. That's a witch hunt to me. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, yeah. all right, moving straight ahead because we got a bunch of topics. We're gonna talk about my main man Kyrie Irving, man, and the vaccination mm. issue, man. Kyrie oh. Irving, basketball player, he's refusing to take the vaccine, the vaccination based off of his rights to do so. And he's getting a lot of backlash from fans, from the NBA, from sportscasters and the like. Um, I'm, 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 I get to start, I'm going to go. Um, Sean Brown, Sean the Don, hello. To hell with the man, one. Nick all day, two. Kyrie to go and sit down and chill, and I agree with him. He has every right. I'm a person that might get vaccinated tomorrow. That don't mean Kyrie Irving is not right. You understand what I'm saying? It doesn't matter what I'm going to do or what you think you're going to do. That man has a right to do what he needs to do, and he has the money to be able to do what he's doing. That's he also- has the money. <laughs> He has the money to be able to do that. Like, everybody's sitting there, you know, there's a lot of people preaching with him. Like, oh, yeah, I'm with Kyrie Irving. But for your $1,000 a week, I guarantee you probably get that needle, that jab in your arm, because you can't afford to lose that $1,000 because you pay, you you going week to week, bro. Your man, he paid him too much for me messing up this season. It's not messing up, bro. That's where you. That's where y'all fans get it twisted. They are not animals. That's what Kyrie is trying to prove to you, Mister Don. They are not animals. They are not cattle. They are not sheep. All right, brother. They are men who have lives, and they are scared just like any one of us. Go Knicks! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little personal, brother, but you know what? I get it. I get it. So. What I'm going to say in regards to Kyrie Irving is I understand his stance. He's taking his personal preference over his uh, over his professional stance. And we should all be given that option to do so. So it doesn't matter if he doesn't be getting paid because he has the money already. So he doesn't have to do that. He He has the money. money. (laughs) So with Kyrie Irving, I think he set an example of what it should be. The problem I do have with it is he's in an environment where he's around people who don't necessarily feel the same way. We get it. There are some people who believe in the science. There are some people who don't. But if he's going to do that, he needs to do that from afar. Like you still, you can't practice with the team. You can't be around the team if you're not vaccinated. I get it. But if you're going to walk the walk, fully walk the walk, don't just set the example. Like you don't have to retire. Just sit this season out. 
Wait until things like up where you don't have to get vaccinated again. Right. Right. You know, right. don't make that don't make that a, a deal right now. And that's what I'm I'm waiting for him to say that. Like he was on Instagram live talking some stuff last night. And I'm like, well, you should just take a pause, come back next season when things are more relaxed. And we don't have to necessarily do it. Okay. So basically, before we get to you, Zach, what we're gonna do is around about this time, what we do is we get a little a little message from our network, right? The Evening Rush Network, the people that the people that, that have us here trying to get us get us get us to do this thing, right? So Zach, right after this message, I want to hear what you got to say about the Kyrie Irving and the vaccination issues. Yo, this is pretty dope. I like this round robin. My, my tongue up. is on fire right now, so I'll be ready. Got, got you. <laughs> Let's go from the Evening Rush Network. Listen to podcast shows podcast and show. do not know where to start. The Evening Rush Network can help you with that. Call us at 929-441-2417 or email us at theeveningrushnetwork at gmail.com for dates and prices. We got you for all your podcast needs. The Evening Rush Network. Tune in, subscribe, and share. And we are back. I don't know where Zachariah goes, but we are back. Exactly right. Exactly right. Got oh. Where did he go? He ghosted us. It's all good though. <laughs> what we're gonna do? We're actually going to um make it a two part because it said the Texas governor bars the COVID vaccine, right? He said they bar. What that mean? They, and he barred the COVID vaccine, meaning that it's not a mandate in Texas. It's illegal to make it mandated. Oh, right. No, no, no. He says, he says. Oh, that's right. I did hear about that one. Listen, we're gonna do that. That's that's gonna be the next one. Um. Um, Zachariah, Kyrie Irving. Okay, so like what you said earlier um, in response to uh, Sean the Don, um, he doesn't work for us. You know, he doesn't work for the public. He happens to be a basketball player that has become an industry of entertainment. You know, so he, he, can, he still has the right to choose what he wants to put in his body. And I think it's kind of like you know, um, I, I'm not sure the exact name for it, but if all of the ants recognize how powerful they were together, then, you know, it wouldn't be a problem. The grasshoppers actually wouldn't be able to rule over them, exactly. you know? And, and I forget what movie that was, but uh, one of those children's movies. But it's, it was it's, ants. It's, it's, it was ants. It was ants. Okay, so, I mean, I feel like, you know, if all of the players recognize the power that they have collectively to be able to speak up and make their own decisions and not be so concerned with, oh, they're going to fire us. No, they can't fire everybody. They can't fire the half of the NBA if everyone chose not to. You know, and, and maybe there's not everyone that doesn't want to, but that's okay. There has to be a voice for people that still want to stand up for what we are. We decide we want to put in our bodies or not. Man, that's my time, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. Kyrie Irving, good for you, brother. Stand up for what you know is right for Exactly, 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 man. Listen, you know, I mean, yo, and but I guess if you have to say one brief little thing, I'm, I don't know if you want to say anything real quick about the Kyrie before we move on, Joe. Oh, no, we can move on. Okay, so um, now, uh, now we're talking about New York City. Who made it a ma who mandated the vaccine for these places, for stadiums and such? Let's talk about the Tex Texas governor who's barring the mandate, who who's not who's making it illegal to make it mandated. Let's talk about that. Mm. Well, that's um, an I, you can go first, Joe. Yeah, go first, go Joe. For because this is part of the problem towards what they call herd immunity. When you have other states where they don't necessarily believe in the science, Florida is another one. And they're to the point where they're just not trying to make this thing go away. They don't feel that it's an issue. This governor's had COVID already and still doesn't see the importance behind all of this. He's in a wheelchair, and they talk. And he still talk about we don't have to make it uh, a mandate. We don't have to make it uh, 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 official because it's a person's choice. Well, I mean, if this is how they feel when they're oppressed, imagine how we feel when we were oppressed. This ain't nothing to be oppressed. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I kind of feel like the people, the elitists, feel. They feel like this is their way of being enslaved or being oppressed. 
and say, take a walk a mile in my ancestors' shoes and come back and talk to me in the morning. Because I can tell you some things about being oppressed or not. But I think if the states don't get along with it, we're going to continue to have these issues. And that's my time. Actually, actually, that's the timer letting you know that, it, I guess. I don't know. I guess. I don't know. We, we The producer let us know. Let the producer let, let the producer stop you, I guess, right? I think it's a 10 second mark, right? Am I right? <laughs> I think it's a 10 second mark because y'all just be less like, yeah, yeah. We'll get it right. We'll get it right. All right, tell me, as a fan of you guys' words, you know what I'm saying? I'm sitting there and I'm like this, yeah, and then all of a sudden you hit a little ding, 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 and y'all just be like, you be like, end scene. So, it makes it fun. It makes it fun. No, we don't. We know we don't. Uh, our producer extraordinaire in the background doing all the things, the, <laughs> some of the research, um, putting the time of the little chingy ching thingy that y'all hear out there. That's our producer. <laughs> um, and she, you know, she do all the background stuff. That's Miss Jada John. Soon we're going to call her Dr. Jada John. She's going for her doctorate in mathematics. I don't know if she does that, but listen, I mean, listen, more power to you. There you go. More power to you. All right. Soon to be. All right. So, yes, you. All right. <laughs> so, my minute for the Texas governor, right? My minute for the Texas governor barring the COVID vaccine mandate. I, I mean, yo, for one, are you on? Go ahead, Zach. Since you're on. Oh, so, I mean, we know uh, Texas has always been the lone star state. You know, they're so-called self-sustainable. They don't need it. Uh, everything that we get from imported around the country or certain things that we get from other states, right? Um, but uh, I think it's I think it's it's kind of it's it's not going to spearhead a movement because the rest of the states are down for it. I think it's just you know them being able to say, hey, look, we don't want it. He happens to be in a position of power, and um, actually, you know, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. You know, people say, oh, well, it's a problem. Uh, I know Joe mentioned it, it. It might be a problem that you know if if these coats these states don't allow the mandate. But I mean, the mandate not alone is, is first of all, the vaccine is not stopping anyone from catching COVID. I mean, the news is out there. Doctors have said it. It's also causing a lot of people to lose their jobs, you know, and I can speak on that firsthand. My wife has just recently withdrawn from her career as a nurse because she refuses to get the vaccine. So now we're doing entrepreneurial routes instead, you know, and it uh, sounds like my time is up. But the point is that, it, again, it boils down to every individual's choice. And if you take our rights away from that, you know, what other rights are next to go? And if, if it's not going to help me from not catching COVID or if it's not helping anything from me not being able to catch it or spread it, if I have it, then why is it so important for me to get it again? I still haven't figured that one out. Listen, touché, touché. Listen, listen, listen. Um, the funny part about this, the, this situation is, you know, um, someone wrote that it's, it's, it's saving lives. Hmm. I still need, I mean, I mean, the math, you know, the math, the math don't equate that to me. You know what I'm saying? It don't, it don't seem so. It don't, you know, the, you know, you know what I mean? Um, and I can decide that I'd be okay with dying if I catch it the same way I can refuse medical care. I mean, yeah, I mean I'm going to tell you the truth. If you catch it, you probably won't die from that, but they'll put that on your death certificate in the hospital. Right. Let's say you, I mean, even if you, have, we, we, you know, there's facts, there's doctors and nurses that have come out to say the numbers right. are being doctored. Right. right. So, um, so you got New York City, Kyrie Irving, New York City is mandating and everybody is all in a tizzy. Why? It's because it's a matter of rights. It's a matter of you as a human being being able to pick and choose what you want to put in your body. That's like Zachariah being a vegetarian and someone telling him before he could go into a school, he better eat this piece of meat. You know what I mean? You know, sounds like the time of the magic. I mean, the same exact thing. If you want to take the technical, it's the same exact thing. There's literally big DNA in the vaccine, and you want me to force me to put that in my body. I don't exactly. eat pig. I don't consume any form of pig. Why would you? Why would I agree to that? Right. So, so when it comes down to what the Texas governor has done, I I, I sort of agree with what he's done, and then mind you, um. And mind you, when you know when you get to him, it's like, you know, it's old white guy. Why am I agreeing with him? But it's just, a, I think it's just part of their agenda because remember, they're also the ones that you know that's banning abortions, right? 
So um, someone had put to me that what they're trying to do is repopulate themselves in a sense. So they're staying away from the, they're, they're telling people they can stay away from the vaccine and you can't get abortions. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm a conspiracy theorist at heart sometimes, but I think, I think, I think the one in one makes two to me because um, you're going to have to give me the numbers later on. You understand what I'm saying? It's, pro, it's proteins, no DNA. Um, you know, the funny part is the same way that you guys want everybody else to do their fact checking and stuff like that. Everybody did their potluck. Check. You know what I'm saying? Everybody did whatever they could do to. to, <laughs> to I mean, I mean, we will eventually. I mean, hopefully, we will get to have you know, and a lot of time in a segment to spend some time on that because I like to bring some stuff to the table to show some facts coming directly from labs and scientists and doctors. Um, I, and you know, so, I've read, I've read them as well, and this ain't. I guess you know, round robin is not the time. Round robin isn't the time, but um. We could do it, you know. You know that we could do it, um, and then we, you know. Let's I mean, give I'm just all for bringing the truth to the table, and and then you can, you know, make your decisions based on that, or you can say, hey, it's not true. I mean, a lot of people how we were, that's, 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 that's how we were. That's how we were brought up, Zachariah. How we were taught. You understand? what I'm saying we're gonna bring the facts, right. bring the truth, and then let everybody else figure it out for themselves. But for the, for the a lot of time, we'll we'll, and, we'll say. Yeah. Right. Hold on, I didn't hear the little jingle, the jingling thing. I guess she didn't even put it on. All right. Well, we're going to move You were just on a, on a roll. She didn't want yeah. to jingle you. Nah. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to talk about right now. Oh, my goodness. This man has been on a roll. He's been on a roll. When I say, to, oh, yep, forgot to talk talk about we're sponsored by Baller. Yeah, we're sponsored by Baller. Yep, see, we we having so much fun. Sorry about that. Sponsored by my favorite, my favorite organization in the whole wide world because it's my organization. Big Appalachian Academy for the Arts, Executive Director Jada John, one of the founders, myself, along with Will, along with Ledge, along with Nana, along with the wife, along with Derek Allen. Who else? Did I miss anybody? I don't think I missed anybody. But Dave Chappelle. Let's go. Show the goat. Where you at? I'm waiting. With my picture of Dave Chappelle. Hello, producer. There we go. Yo, Joe, you don't have to be on mute. Your your background is fine, Joe. Oh, no, I'm good. I'm just waiting for y'all to finish talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Leave that up there. Matter of fact, I want you to leave that up there this whole three, whatever minutes we use, because I need people to realize how fake and phony this society is. Is That's my minute right. starting? My minute starts now. The man said, I said the N-word 5,000 times on the Chappelle show. Nobody tried to cancel me. In fact, they offered me $50 million to keep doing it. That is so true. That's a fact. That is Absolutely. such a fact. And that's the reason why all of this outrage is based on people's feelings being hurt and all their emotional, their emotional, I don't know, man. Listen, I, I, I don't want to go there. But listen, I'm tired of it. You understand what I'm saying? Leave that man alone. That man already canceled himself. You understand what I'm saying? For this same reason. Because he was tired of just showing, you know, showing how 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 clownish and how much of you know how 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 much buffoons we are. Nah, he wanted to open to, to rip open the, the, the system that got us this way. You understand what I'm saying? Show us show what got us into these situations. Why are we sitting here calling ourselves the N-word all the time? Why are we sitting there degrading ourselves, downgrading our women, peeing, pee, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, when he did the R. Kelly one, you know what I mean? Listen, he listen, this man, this man is a genius. He is the greatest of all time. He is the great greatest of our time. Dave Chappelle, listen, I, I didn't even get a chance to speak to the agenda, but that's a little bit of the agenda to try to keep this man down. You know what I'm saying, Joe? Well, listen, I guess it's my turn. Dave Chappelle is probably on my top five list of greatest comedians of all time. I have a few others before him just because of their line, their body of work. But as far as modern comedy goes, Chappelle would be number one, in my opinion. Now, 100%. as you said, canceling himself is what he did. And he's come back from that. The reason why they make such a big deal out of these things is because uh, that it's the name of the game right now. You know, there's always good. You can't make a common statement or a fact without upsetting somebody. 
and somebody everybody's gonna be upset. But what they're failing to realize for those who didn't watch the documentary is that he told a story behind what he was saying. And right. just Every time. making statements, it was right. a story, and people right. obviously uh, and what's the phrase they use, butt hurt. The phrase that they use is butt hurt. <laughs> so uh data wasn't listening to the story. All they did was hear what he said, Kevin Hart. Please. Hey, Sean, go watch one of your other shows for Kevin Hart, bro. Right. This is not the Kevin Hart stage, bro. <laughs> not, not here, bro. Oh, my gosh. That's hilarious. Man, close out. Close out, Joe. But, and, and, and to, to end my statement, it's part of the theme, you know. We can't say what was on our minds anymore. So we have to keep everybody happy and when we upset one person or we upset a group of people that's what it's gonna be you know that this is the backlash that we get but you can't cancel somebody who's canceled themselves a couple of times so like dave chappelle said if this is what it feels like to be canceled i'm loving it you know bring it on yep zachariah yeah i think that canceling himself thing was you know he's he's very strategic not only if you if you listen to his comedy his stand up the way he it, it's like a, a a thread a needle and thread putting together a seam if you listen to the segment from beginning to end and he mentions all topics that were highly controversial and relevant to to you know current current events in, in, in that uh span between uh each comedy special that he does and he's 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 literally says things that everyone else is afraid to say but thinks it and his comedy is very intellectual. And why I say he's very strategic, he canceled himself to prove that Hollywood cannot buy me. You know what I mean? I don't have a price. And at any time I walk away from this, I'm just going to prove to you that I am more in demand than you know. You need people like Dave Chappelle. We need Dave Chappelle. We need comedians that are going to speak up for on controversial is issues, not be afraid and not be molded by Hollywood. And so Dave Chappelle, he's not doing nothing that he's not supposed to do. He's playing his role. And at the end of the day, when, when it's all said and done, he's a legend. He's yeah. a legend. And I agree with Joe. I agree with Michael. He's, he's my top number one comedian of this era. Yeah. yeah. Well, Without him. Well, look at it this way. Look at the uh, look at the George Carlins. Look at the Paul Mooney's. Look at the Dick Gregory's. You know, they yeah. all had that same genre about them. They draw heat That's true. because they go over the truth. And their careers were that you could say they were canceled in their generation because the only thing, only thing, only thing Dave Chappelle is not gonna go on to do things that Dick Gregory did after his comedian efforts because he's gonna be too busy smoking a cigarette, say, ah, oh, what the hell? I don't care what people think yeah. anyway. I'm me. Right. You know? <laughs> but he's not he's not being moved by the system regardless of what. And he at the end of the day, he's the epitome of freedom of speech. Right. But you see the thing is that the thing is that give me the, the why I give him GOAT status is because remember the Dick Gregory's, the Paul Mooney's and the such actually was comedians in the free when you actually had freedom of speech. Dave Chappelle shifted from freedom of speech um era into this you have no freedom to speak your mind anymore and, and then he's really still right. doing so yeah. right. so you go to, i'm going to i'm going to tilt my hat to him not tip the nod even from the past to not to, who straight copping copping his <laughs> yo sean, sean sean is mad sean must be a real kevin hart fan sean got a lot of kids i see why you're a kevin hart fan you got a lot of kids you got a lot of kids he he, he he's good for the children i get you yeah. i get you yeah. i understand i understand yeah. sir you have kids that you at home but we're going to move ahead because i we uh we're going to we could probably talk about dave Chappelle again and the agenda or the trans the trans agenda that goes against him right Right. Um, but we're gonna speak to De Demi Lovato. We told you we're gonna go from Kyrie Irving and Demi Lovato. We're gonna talk about it all, right? Demi right. Lovato, singer, actress, Disney World girl, or whatever. Um, you know, um, substance abuser, suicidal. I, 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 I can't leave that one out. Huh? No. Substance I abuse. Can't leave her. that one out. She probably yeah. was on one when she said this thing. Right. All it right. So. Her. <laughs> Demi Lovato says, I think that we have to stop calling them aliens. Them who, who you say them is. 
them is the alien. <laughs> them is real life aliens because aliens is a derogatory term for anything. That's why I like to call them ETs. You know, when I first heard this or read this game, rather say, I actually thought she was talking about immigrants, Mexican American immigrants. And then I got to the last line and said, that's why I call him ET. I said, what kind of new drug is she on? I mean, is there an alien out there that she knows that had a drink with her or popped the pill with her and said, hey, I'm offended? Oh, my God. Somebody has to say something about this. Yo, bro. I mean, come bro. on, man. What is the oh, world going to? Listen, nah, bro. I, bro. I, have, yeah, I have yet to meet one. I'm trying to think, well, who are these people we're offending? I haven't heard them say anything about it yet. If I hear Elias says, I'm offended by you calling me that word, like calling me <laughs> then I'll stop saying it. <laughs> word. I mean, I, then we can start a movement. You know what I mean? Word. They, they, we, yeah, you got some grounds for that one. You got some grounds. Yeah. If you told me uh, that... Yo, this is my man. What's my man? What's with Dave Chappelle? What was his name? Bilbo? Bilbo. 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 This is my main man, Bibble. <laughs> Yo, listen, if you ain't got Bibble come down and howl at me and say, listen, I ain't with that alien stuff. Don't be calling me no alien. I'm I'm right. I'm Bibble. Right. Then I ain't with it, man. But yeah, I needed I needed that chuckle, man. I needed that oh chuckle God, because that. what it is is um anybody need another minute? Anybody need some more time with this? That 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 was enough time for that. That one, was man. enough because that's how yeah. fun. last thing I want to say. This is just another story. This is another what I call quote unquote Kardashian story to keep us distracted from real issues at of hand. And, and so now we don't deserve any more. That doesn't deserve any more of our attention. Nope. Right, 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 right. All right. So um uh this one right here, I was, was going to skip it. I'm not skipping past it. Superman is bisexual. Mm. <laughs> I'm not even. Gonna, I'm not going to spend that much time on this yeah, one bro. because I, 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 this yeah. for me. You know what I mean? Shame <laughs> on DC Comics. Shame on DC. Yeah, shame so on you. Uh, something like it that. Make sense. It doesn't make sense. It's 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 it's, it's overkill now. Yeah, like I said, it's overkill. Um, go away with that, man. I don't get that one, man. Well, but we're gonna move on ahead, man. All right, now, um, oh, I got a question for the two of you, real quick. Where do we stand with achieving the American dream as a black family? Uh, well, obviously, it's not the flavor of the month right now independence among self is the flavor of the month. So you don't have a black family. You don't have a family period when you have all of these other options to live your life. Family is going to become non-existent or whatever their version of a family is, whether it's two of the same gender, three of the same gender, that's going to be considered a natural born family. Family is not going to be the basic mother, the father and the children. It's going to be others. I know quite a few people who live that lifestyle now. And I often question them. I say, well, how do you explain to your children this is a normal family? Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't fathom it, but people do it. So let's listen. We're going to get to the fact where the dog and the wife is going to be a family. Uh, the bird and the husband is going to be a family. You know, so it, it's about, I guess, how whatever they identify with. That's part of what a family means now. So, but as far as a black family goes, it goes with uh, the, the uh, population control. You know, you're getting rid of us, so we don't have to have a black family anymore. You're telling us to be independent, so you don't have to have a black family because within black family, there's strength. And as long as that strength is not here, we can't uh, custom our dreams. We can't move forward. One second, Zachariah. One second. One second, Zachariah. Zachariah, one second. Um, um, Jada, throw up the systemic agenda um, 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 pick you have ready. Because that actually goes along with the question. Because the systemic agenda and the bullet points to the systemic agenda actually goes about the family, because it's about the mother, the children, and the, the father, the, ch the father, the mother, the child, right? So he says, so this go, you know, this is what their agenda was back then. This is what their agenda continues to be. The church is not so much, ex ex but more of the government, you know what I mean, which actually is ran by the churches as well. If you don't know, now you know, right. you know what I mean? Um it goes towards the question. So now, 
tackle the question, Zachariah. So, okay, this is a uh, pretty accurate um, pictograph even today. Um, and, and not more so churches, but what the church has established in our society. You know, when they put in um, freedom of religion in the Constitution, it was a tactical move that at some point in the future, everyone would be uh, choosing to follow whatever they wanted to until there's no there's a blurred line between um, what is what is religion. You know, so today, you know, you could say, well, hey, you know, I worship this chair and everybody would have to say, well, you know, you're free to do that. And so that that became something that now you just have to be programmed by whatever the programming is at hand, which today is through different channels of media. So that's where the first one lies. The second one, the schools still control the children's mind. Um, they teach them lies from day one. You know, and, and I always mention about, you know, Christopher Columbus and Abraham Lincoln, you know, and, and you know, everything from from, from what we're, we're being taught um, to being forced into a certain lifestyle. They teach all of our children the same holidays, but not every household observes those holidays. You know, I have to counter what my what my four year old learns in TK right now. You know what I mean? Um, and then the prisons control. The father. And why is that? Because in certain uh, low income uh, neighborhoods, there is a liquor store in every corner. There is drugs and guns fed to the community by the CIA itself, you know, and it has come out where you have ex-CIA and FBI and uh, military officials that are no longer going to become whistleblowers. And I think this is what is the agenda. And it's to turn, it's to break apart the family from the inside so that there is no more family structure. So there is no more American dream. And it's rights being snatched away from um, black Americans, minorities, and anyone that's not under the systemic agenda. So I'm going to cap it off with that. Where do we stand with achieving the American dream as a black family? We stand <laughs> as far away from it as we have in the past. We were never close to it. We were never close to the American dream. Even when some of our people had even gotten any 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 type of um, 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 riches or, or wealth or what have you, that wasn't the American dream in a sense of for the black family. That was the American dream for that individual. So they always threw us bones throughout the years. They always gave us a, you know, a Michael Jackson. They gave us all of these different greats. You know what I mean? And you notice we always, we always dealing with firsts. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, the, we still got first to this day. You know what I mean? The first vice president, you know, first black vice president, the first this, the first that. It's always a bunch of firsts. And the systemic agenda is, is is running it's 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 running rampant like i said the churches the way zachariah broke it down i don't even need to go too 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 much into that you understand what i'm saying the churches has the churches it's, it's a mind control thing right so the churches was about the mind control what controls their mind now social media whatever they put out there on the tv that is the new church you understand what i'm saying the new church is the media it's whatever they want to plug into us. Schools controlling the children. Like he said, listen, from day one, they're teaching us their agenda. You understand what I'm saying? I don't care about none of these other holidays. There's a million other holidays, but they're teaching you their four major holidays. Why are there four major holidays? Because that's the popular ones. Come on now. This is how they this is how they work us. You understand what I'm saying? And it's about money. It's about money. Oh, all of it. All of it is about money. And then the fathers being in the prison system, come on, man. Listen. That's the money, that's the money maker. That's, right the money. Right that's, that's the money maker. Out. You know what I mean? Because what happens is that's free labor. What you're doing is you it's 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 it's, it's the new age slavery. You know what I mean? They it's used to the tell us that states own the prison systems and that was all a lie. Now it's just nowadays they stop telling it's the lies. Private owned. It's owned by private. corporations. Mm -hmm. right. By yeah. many corporations, by many by many men who but they were uh, always funded by private corporations. Right. So where do we stand? We don't stand any closer than we ever stood when they when they made up the whole term the American dream. When they made up the American dream. We weren't part of that dream. We was the nightmare that, you know, we was the nightmare that was coming. You understand what I'm saying? So when they talk about the American dream, we're not there. You know what I mean? And as we're about to... That's the hook. <laughs> that's the hook? Spend your money song, and work right? your butt off and then spend all your money and pay your taxes and be a good little robot in society. And now you can have that too. But you, it's like it's like holding the carrot in front of the horse. You're never going to catch it. 
you know, because right. it, it, the agenda is not set up for you. You have to be that one that breaks the mold and does something different outside of the systemic agenda in order to achieve that. You know, Jada, that's, that involves free thinking. Yeah, Jada, that's yes, free thinkers is what we are. That's definitely what we are, mental warriors and free thinkers. But, yeah, the funny part is that's their dream and our nightmare. So their dream is to have us slaving for them, and our nightmare will always be that, us slaving for them. So with that being said, we got one more. I got one more thing that I want to hear you guys speak to, and that's all these silly, fictitious holidays. There was there was, there was, was like a million of them in the last four months. In the last four weeks, I've never heard of none of these things. Not such and such day it's it's little brother day it's big sister day it's 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 whatever what, what you got for me joe it's coming out day it's, it's what coming out day coming out day yeah i heard that one what you heard zachariah oh man i, I heard so many man it's ridiculous man so I, I can't do my own. Own. i'm coming what up with my own one. yeah come up with, that's what we're gonna do but to close out we're gonna come up with our own fictitious day what you got zach what day you okay, want? My, my holiday for today is make up your own holiday today and celebrate any any kind of way you want. Because <laughs> that's everybody is doing it. And then post it on social media and whoever wants to follow your holiday, they're all welcome to it. Right. <laughs> that's my holiday. Hey, Joe, what's your, what's, your, what's your fictitious holiday, Joe? Oh, gosh. Socially reversed day, meaning that if you're not poor, you become rich. If you're not rich, you become poor. That way you can truly identify with the other people around you. <laughs> for a day. For a day. For Jada a day. Said, for a day, Jada yeah. Said, Jada, said, Jada said it should be Silent Fart Day. And <laughs> she went there. And then what I say is it should be Mac and Cheese Day. Yeah, Mac and Cheese Day. I love Mac and Cheese, so it should be a day for it. I celebrate that. that. Yeah, that, that, that's a good one. And with that, man, listen. It was a great first show. Give a black man a dollar day. Ah, yeah, I'm with that one. Give, yeah, give a black please. man a dollar day. I'm with that one too, but why we gotta just give him a dollar? <laughs> right. Right. I think give he more than a dollar. Well, give everybody a gotta give a black man a dollar, so we how about get a lot of money, you know. How about give the black man his 40 acres in his mule day? That's, That's what we right. do. Oh, okay. you know what I mean, okay. and with that, man, it was such a pleasure to bring Zachariah on board. Like I said, I already knew that it was gonna be a breath of fresh air. Round Robin, sixty second. That was actually pretty dope. We're gonna we're gonna figure that out next 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 um, production meeting. Yes. Um, plug with Molly Joe and my main man Zachariah. Man, listen. Officially a part of the show, man. Love it. Bro. Yeah. Love officially it, here. He officially here. Everybody's got to get used to him out there in Cali. We out here in New York about to go to sleep. Yeah. Here about to go to dinner. I'm jealous a little bit. I'm a little jealous, <laughs> but. I wouldn't want it no other way, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't want to do this with nobody else, you know what I mean? Because this brother rep for us, man, you know? Absolutely. Appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate y'all. And with that said, Joe, anything to say? Nah, just stay tuned. We got a lot in store for y'all this season, so be ready. We, we bring a it A whole lot. A whole yes, lot. Sir. Peace. Peace. Peace.